Welcome back everyone to 7.3 trigonometric substitution. Now in this video we just have two more examples, so let's get to it. Alright, in this first one we have the absolute value of 4 minus x squared all over x squared dx, and this is what we want to integrate. Now back from our table of rules and substitutions we should make, uh, we should recognize that this is 2 sine theta. So then dx is going to be 2 cosine theta d theta, and our range is going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for theta. Okay, then in this case, uh, let's go ahead and substitute these in. So I'm going to have the integral of the square root of 4 minus, and now when I square x, I'm going to get 4 sine squared theta, all over, now x squared is going to be again 4 sine squared theta, and then instead of dx, I'm going to write 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so now let's go ahead and simplify. So when I take the square root of 4, remember, there's 4 in each one of these. So factor that out, take the square root, I get 2. And then the square root, and now this would normally be 1 minus sine squared theta. But let me go ahead and erase this, and I'll just write it as cosine squared theta, because that's the identity we're using here. Then I have 4 sine squared theta in the denominator, and another 2 cosine theta d theta. So we can see there's good cancellation here. 2, 2 makes 4. OK. And then this is going to be equal to the integral of, and now technically this is the absolute value of cosine over sine squared theta. Then I have another cosine of theta, d theta. Now again, remember our domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, cosine only takes on positive values there. So the absolute value does nothing. We can cancel that out or get rid of it and it won't hurt anything. So now I have cosine squared theta over sine squared theta and we have to think about hmm how do I integrate this? So we have to get a little bit creative here and the idea is going to come from using the trig identity. So a trig identity that I think we should consider is looking at sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 and then I want to try to rearrange this so I can make it for something uh, for cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. So if I divide through by sine squared theta, the claim is I get something good. So here it is, and we can see uh, that then cosine squared theta over sine squared theta is equal to then 1 over sine squared theta minus 1. So let's go ahead and write that down here. 1 over sine squared theta minus 1 d theta. Now, integrating 1 is very easy, or negative 1, it's very easy. Now, how do I integrate 1 over sine squared theta? Well, the claim is that it's something like, uh, you know, when I integrate secant squared, or 1 over cosine squared, I get tangent. So when I integrate 1 over sine squared, it'd be something like cotangent. Right? So I should think about, it's something like cotangent. Uh, the claim is that this isn't exactly right, uh, so let's figure out what it should be. So if I was to go backwards, if I was to take the derivative of cotangent, well, cotangent is the same thing as cosine theta divided by sine theta. And now I need to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is, again, a cosine. So I'm going to write cosine squared divided by the bottom squared. Let me rearrange this really quick, right? So I have a negative sine theta, a negative sine theta. Oops, so, so that's going to be negative sine theta squared. And if I was to factor out a negative, right, I'd have sine squared plus cosine squared, and that's going to be 1. So this is going to be negative 1 divided by sine squared theta. So you can see it's not exactly uh, sine squared theta, but it's actually negative sine squared theta. So this is not cotangent, but it should actually be negative cotangent. Okay. Integrate negative 1, I get negative theta, plus my constant of integration. Okay, so now again, uh, we need to get this back in terms of x's, right? So I know that x is equal to 2 sine theta. Here it is. So I need to use this to try to figure out what is cotangent and what is theta. So, okay, draw my reference triangle. Sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? And in this case, Sine is x over 2, so x opposite hypotenuse 2. 
So then what is this other leg uh, equal to? Well, it needs to be the square root of 4 minus x squared, right? Because when I square the legs, add them together, I should get the hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So now I'm looking for cotangent. Cotangent. Well, tangent's usually opposite over adjacent. So cotangent needs to be adjacent over opposite. So adjacent, 4 minus x squared, over opposite, x, minus, and instead of theta, well, we have sine theta equals x over 2. So if I take the inverse of sine, well, we have theta is equal to sine inverse of x over 2 plus constant of integration. So there we go, there's my answer all in terms of x's. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> all right, let's do one more. We haven't seen any where we had a substitution uh, with secant yet. So this last one, the claim is uh, of this flavor. So we have x squared minus 25. So you can notice that as a part of the integral. Uh, so x squared minus 25 all into the square root. This should set off some bells and whistles. Let's go way back up here. Whee! Yes, when you have x squared minus a squared under a square root, uh, you should use secant. Okay. So in this case, well, we have x squared minus 25. So our a is going to be 5. So the correct substitution that we should be thinking about is x equals 5 secant theta. And then I need to substitute right for that dx. So dx is going to be 5 secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. OK, let's do some substitution. Oh, uh, before I get to that, sorry, let me write down my domain. Right. So my domain in this case is theta ranges between 0 to pi over 2 or pi to 3 pi over 2. This will be important later. OK, now let's do some substitution. So I'm going to integrate, and instead of x, I'm going to write 5 secant theta. So when I square that, uh, that's going to be 25 secant squared theta. OK. In the denominator, I have that again, 5 secant theta. And instead of dx, I'm going to write 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. All right. So if I factored out the 25, and took the square root of that, that'd be 5. And what's left over? Well, secant squared theta minus 1. And we need to remember the identity, right? Secant squared theta minus 1 is the same thing as tangent squared theta. That's why we use this substitution, right? That's why secant's the right one to use, is because this cancels nicely and just makes tangent squared theta. The rest of it stays the same. We can see secants cancel, fives cancel. OK. And now this is going to be the integral of 5 absolute value of tangent times tangent of theta d theta. Now the claim is we can get rid of these absolute values like usual. Uh, but in order to check this, let's look really quick at tangent on my domain. So tangent, uh, remember it has a period of pi, right? So let's go ahead and write down some values here. So tangent looks something like this, and then after that period of pi, it repeats. So it looks same thing again, and we could draw it over here if we wanted. So it has a lot of asymptotes. Okay, so now we're on this range from 0 to pi over 2, so that's this part right here, or from pi to 3 pi over 2, this part right here. And you can notice on both of those pieces, tangent is positive, right? It's above the x-axis, so therefore this absolute value is doing nothing. Remember, absolute values take positive numbers and they leave them alone. So this is the same thing as 5 tangent squared theta d theta. Okay, so now I have to think, how do I evaluate out the integral of tangent squared? Well, I can pull this uh, 5 out if I really wanted to. And then instead of tangent squared, I'm going to use the identity. I'm going to write this as secant squared theta minus 1. Because the idea is I know how to integrate secant squared and 1. I don't know how to integrate tangent squared. So when I integrate secant squared, I get tangent. And when I integrate 1, I get theta. Okay, And I'll distribute this 5 back through. OK. And so the last part, as always, we need to get this back in terms of x's. 
So I know x is 5 secant theta. I'm going to use this to get it back in terms of x's. So here's my reference triangle. All right, so secant of theta is x over 5. So secant, well, that's 1 over cosine. Cosine is normally adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse is x, and adjacent is 5. And therefore, if I use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this other leg, I get square root of 20, sorry, x squared minus 25. Okay, so now I'm looking for what is tangent. Well, tangent needs to be opposite over adjacent. So opposite, square root of x squared minus 25 over adjacent, 5. Minus 5, uh, theta. Well, remember we chose this domain so that secant has an inverse. So I can apply secant inverse to both sides. Uh, and I'm going to get theta is secant inverse of x over 5. All right, let's take one more line just to simplify these fives here. And so I get the square root of x squared minus 25 minus 5 secant inverse of x over 5 plus c. hoo -ah, We did it. That is the end of 7.3, well, at least the last example that we have here. Go ahead, take a quick break before you get started on your homework. I'll see you next time in 7.4, Partial Fractions.